Hello there folks, today we are taking a look at the game called Ponzi Scheme, it's published by Tasty Minstrel Games and the designer is Jesse Lee. In order to understand the game you really need to know what is Ponzi Scheme. It's an actual terminology used and it is basically a fraudulent investment operation where a person or a company is offering really good investment plans um, like high returns, short turn and uh, like really consistent. So basically too good to be true offers. But this money he gives uh, gets from investors, he doesn't uh, invest legitimately, but kind of spends on, hi on himself. But in order to pay out dividends to investors, he needs to recruit new investors. So basically, money from investors goes in order to pay out dividends to previous ones. In order for this uh, scheme to continue, you need to like ongoingly recruit new and new and new investors. And this kind of scheme is guaranteedly going to fall apart because it's impossible to get constantly new investors. So in this game, we are those fraudsters who are trying to maintain this scheme as long as possible, not to be the first one to get go bankrupt. Yeah, let me show you my offer. The game of pointy scheme is played over the course of several rounds until one or more players go bankrupt. Then all the other players who still survived will tally points. Now, um, you have different phases in this game. The first phase is that in turn order, each one of you is going to grab one of the funding goals and also grab the industry tile. So at the beginning of the game, no, nobody has any of the industry tiles and there are four of them for different types. So let's say I'm going to grab this industry tile. I don't remember the exact real estate should be. So I'm going to grab it in front of me. Because it's the first level of that industry tile, I can grab cards from the first row only. If that would be the second level of that, I can grab the cards only from the second row and so on. But I can also grab uh, the other industry and just take it from the first row again. Now, let's say I grab this one. I'm also going to grab this card over here. And then it says that I'm going to get 10 money. I'm going to grab the money and put it behind my screen. Also, it says that I have to put it on the position 5 right now here. The lower number here says how much of the dividends I need to pay later when the wheel will come to this, play, to this card. And then I'm going to replenish and the new player... Now, whenever, whenever you replenish, uh, you always put the highest three cards, then the next three, and the lowest three cards, like that. So you have to rearrange them. So this, is, this goes like this, like this, and like this. This is a really high card, but you need to pay quite a lot of dividends. Now you all do that. After everyone has grabbed the cards, you do a clandestine trading. <coughs> trading sorry. What is clandestine trading? You have this wallet. Now, uh, starting from the first player, each player can choose another player who has the same industry uh, with. So let's say if I have the red industry and another player has the red industry, we can do a clandestine trading with each other. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, I want your tile right here. I'm going to secretly grab some money uh, behind my screen. I'm going to put it in the wallet. I'm going to hand it over to him. Now he looks at this uh, inside here. He, you cannot say anything about how much money is inside. So he looks at this secretly and he now decides. If he accepts the money inside, he must give you that tile. Or he will double the amount, thus basically returning the 10 right here and paying the 10 on top of that. But grabbing your tile. Whatever the decision, you cannot refuse. If it's done, it's done. So let's say he was like, oh, 10, all right, I'm going to get the money and then I'm going to get the tile. And it's done. And every player would do that clandestine training thing. Then you're going to pass the first player marker. And then the first player is the one who chooses what card will go out of this pile of cards. And then we go to see if there is a market crash. Now, the market crash happens if there are as many red cards, bear cards in the market here 
as there are players. Let's say if we play a three player game and there are these cards, then uh, the market crashes. So the market crash basically means that first of all, you'll need to discard the highest industry you have, one of these tiles. Then you also turn the wheel twice. Now about the turning wheel, usually at the end of the turn, you turn the wheel only once. And now there's the thing, whenever the wheel reaches certain cards or cards, you have to pay dividends that are under here. So right now I would have to pay nine. Then this card will go back to its position of, let's say here it's five and there are positions of three, four, there is no two or one. Then it will go back. So basically what it means, this card will haunt you, haunt you all the time. Whenever the wheel will come back to this card, it will never go away. You pay dividends in one, two, three, four, five turns, you pay it again and so on. But as you go further, you always grab a card, a card, a card. You will have many more cards around here. So you will have to pay a lot of uh, dividends. And that's basically it. And you do that until I said somebody goes bankrupt. Then the ones who go bankrupt, they are out of the game. And everyone else will score points. So basically they'll uh, score points based on the industry tiles and the level of the industry tiles. So basically, if I have something like that, I score three points for second level, uh, there should be six points for the third level and so on. So, but you score uh, the levels of these. So one plus six, seven points. And there are also extra points of how much money you still have left uh, behind your screen. You get some, quite a few extra points. And that's how the Ponzi scheme is played. The components of this game are top-notch. Uh, it's uh, TMG, uh, thick cardboards. There isn't much of the art on components, but I like the graphical layout. It, mm -hmm. It's clear, it's clear. And I like the wallet yep. as well. Although this game has paper money, which many people don't like, we personally don't have problem with it. And we understand why it's here, because it has to fit wallet. Very cool. Now, um, the game itself involves, for me, uh, more around the players themselves and every game also around players but you know some euro games some german euro games as well where you're doing your own stuff you're building something up and there is a lot of things on the boards uh, in the game itself here everything depends on the players how much do you risk how much do you offer how much is offered uh, to you and it's like you can play it with just uh, cutting a few things from uh, your own cardboard, doing the print and play. There isn't much of the art, there isn't much of the components different uh, that are moving, moving parts as well. So uh, it all evolves around players, really, really social game, I would yeah, say. Yeah, so the way the so there are social games, it's not a social game in, in sense of a party yeah, yeah, game, yeah. but it's real around people. So mm -hmm. I, I totally agree on that. It depends on the people. Much. And uh, what you really have to mention about the game is theme. Come on, mm -hmm. it's unique. That was definitely the first thing that I was yeah. sold because I'm kind of in like fighting financial crime. So I was like, oh my gosh, really I have to have it. Yeah, it's, so. it's the game about economy. But on the other hand, it's about not like, it's about not burning out of money, you yeah. know. Yeah, which Completely you really like. Completely different. Yeah, and but the, on the other hand, uh, this layer creates this this different like a diverse economy uh, creates a an element of frustration in my opinion where whatever like you're all gonna go bankrupt at some point and you realize that and you just uh, need to uh, let's say survive yeah. until another player goes bankrupt and it can feel frustrating because the further in the game the more you feel like oh I'm gonna crash I'm gonna crash I'm gonna burn there's not much money two turn wheels and then it, it's done, I'm done, I'm done. And then somebody crashes before you and they're like, oh, oh my God, I, I, I'm saved, I'm saved, I can win the game. So there is that, not about I'm gonna get the most of something and win the game, it's about I just need to survive this big loss of money. But it is like super thematical because I like, if you know about these 
Ponzi schemes, then you know that it's extremely stressful by the time you have to pay out the dividends. So it it gives you that stress, that gives yeah, you yeah. that frustration. That's oh my god, am I gonna make it you just, or not? You just need to bear that. You need to you understand going into the game that mm -hmm. it might have this frustration, and it's not certainly for all people. Right. This game is really for mathematic mind because mm -hmm. you have to be good with numbers because whenever you give offer you, you have to keep in mind you have to give the perfect offer because otherwise you could you will either give away your child way mm -hmm. too cheap or you're gonna get like opponents in the industry trial really expensive so which won't make sense mm -hmm. and especially by the end of the game it, it gives you extremely good understanding what is like the financial situation of opponent perhaps he's you you might see how desperate he's to get money and in that situation you might get sometimes extremely cheap so mm -hmm. it gives a lot of that thinking but like number wise thinking which is not for everybody yeah, uh, the other thing I like in this game is that this um, the wheel turning, and it usually turns uh, once uh, per round. But if the market crashes, where you get get enough um, of this amount of uh, of red cards, the bear cards, are they called the bear cards? Bear yeah, cards, yeah. Yes. Then the market crashes, and then the wheel uh, turns twice. And at some moments, it's really crucial. Um, at some moment, because the first player who has the first player token, he decides whether he will discard whatever card will, he will discard from the center. So he can discard a red card and hope that another red card won't come up and there won't be a, a market crash. So sometimes you want to save yourself, sometimes you want the market to crash, and sometimes it is sort of like your decision, and it's a yes. crucial decision yeah. in my opinion. And because you make you can your opponent suffer. Someone, right? yeah. You can yeah. completely bankrupt at, someone. At the right moment, decision. it might be crucial. Yeah. And I, and I like that aspect. Uh, the game is rather fast. So even if you start, like, if you start good, so you have plenty of money, you can do whatever you want, but it, you will get to the moment where you are struggling really quickly. So the game is much mm -hmm. faster than I thought. Like, it evolves much, escalates much, much more quickly. Yeah, at first you're sort of like, you, f you feel fine, you feel fine. Well, I, I can pay this yeah. dividends, I can pay these dividends. And at some point it just, you, you realize like, in two turns, I'll be, I'll be done. Yeah. Something like that, so yeah. Uh, so, this game is better with experienced players. So, pretty much, if you play it first time yourself or show someone, mm -hmm. The game is completely different. You have to think in this game so differently that first game you are guaranteed you're gonna just try to understand or yeah, try to like flow. switch your mind in mm -hmm. a completely different set of thinking here. Twist it. So twist it. you like this game is better with those who've played it several times. In that case, you know better how to think and what to expect yeah. from the game. Yeah. So yeah, the, the more you play, the, the more you're gonna like it. I think it. there's that element of bluffing inside there, there oh, where sure. like somebody, like you, you offer the money, but it's all secret. You offer the money and the other person is like, wow. And then the other two persons who are not involved in the trading right now, they're like, how much money did he offer? Yeah, they like, will try to like, like make their Yeah, own. there's 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 that bluffing element, and there's a lot of that so sociality as we as we talk about this. So that's why I think it's good with more experienced players because they know where and when to do all the stuff, yeah. the social stuff. Yeah. So uh, already the, the game plays from uh, three to five players, and I think it plays fine with all player counts. Because uh, basically the turns are quick, mm -hmm. yeah? You pick the card, you get the money. The other player's turn and then the, uh, the second phase occurs. It's all like that. It's all, it's all really quick. Yeah. And of course maybe more, a little, I would say more players might be a little bit more choices interesting, more with, choices with, regarding trading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean trading. So I kind of like more, more players, but the difference is really not that major. So I really like it with three players as well. So that's why I would say it's it works well with any player count. Yeah, well, that's it true though. Depends so, but it plays from three. So overly, um, I personally have a little bit mixed feelings because I love the theme, I love the feel that it, it, the game gives. But as my 
as my own brain doesn't work that well with numbers, I, in order to make that perfect like offer, mm -hmm. which is important in the game, which is such an important and fun part of the game, I have to think long. But mm -hmm. that takes away fun from other gamers and myself. Maybe if I would play it a lot, a lot, a lot, I would like, I would start thinking different way, yeah, but, but I really love how different the game is, how different yeah. feel the game gives you. It's, it's really something completely unique. As we have many games coming in and going out, we, we don't usually play games uh, too many times mm -hmm. uh, in a row or something like that. So we just play games a few times and that's, that's it. Uh, that's the reality. And I, I, I can say I do like this game, but it gives me this, as I told you about this, frustration. It gives me the element of frustration. And at some point it's fine, I'm totally fine with that. And at some point I feel like it's not so good. And if this is the last game of the evening, it might be a frustrating uh, end of the evening. So it's not a bad thing. That's the game. That's the theme, you know? And yes. It, 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 you really have I understand to think that, that this is a, a part of the game, part of a theme, that it's frustrating yeah, and stressful and at some moment. Overly, I it still have my, I do have mixed feelings as well. Mm -hmm. And plus uh, our playing group who we play with uh, have mixed feelings. As it's well. it's pretty much everything goes around that you really have to have this set of mind where you're comfortable juggling numbers yeah. and like thinking through. So, None of us is, is with yeah, that. Yeah, overly this, just, just for me, this, this is not the game that I would definitely like, let's play Ponzi Scheme. Okay, let's play it. It needs the right moment, it needs the right people, and it's sometimes difficult to, to accomplish on the gaming nights. I agree so. that you need uh, like right people for that, but I personally would like to play it more because for me it's it's perfect game of challenge. So I'm not good at this, mm -hmm. but I want to play more and become better because I like the idea. I like kind of everything behind it, but I'm just so bad at it. Right. But yeah, I appreciate the design. It just, just not for me, I think. No, not but for uh, not for everybody. Yeah. But let's go to our dice ratings, yeah? Shall we? I give this game 6 dice out of 10. And I give this game 7.5 dice out of 10.